between the Cleveland State Vikings and the University of Indiana Hoosiers. Introducing the starting lineup. At forward for Cleveland State, the visiting team. At 6'6", a senior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 24, Clinton Smith. For the University of Indiana, at 6'6", a freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 20, Rick Calloway. For Cleveland State, a 6'5", junior from Toledo, Ohio, number 44, Clinton Renzi. For the University of Indiana, 6'6", junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 34, Andre Harris. For Cleveland State, a 6A junior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 33, Eric Mudd. At center for Indiana, 6'7 junior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Daryl Thomas. At guard for Cleveland State, a 6'1 freshman from New York City, number 10, Ken McFadden. For Indiana, 6'2 junior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. For Cleveland State, a 5'10 junior from Dorchester, Massachusetts, number 5, Ed Bryant. And for the University of Indiana, 6'4 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 21, Winston Morgan. The head coach of Cleveland State, Kevin Mackey. The head coach of basketball at the University of Indiana, Bobby Knight. We'll return with the opening tip-off of Indiana and Cleveland State from Syracuse, New York, in the Carrier Dome after these messages. Around the world. Men of science watch and wait. Adam, the second place team of the Big Ten with a 13 and 5 conference mark against Cleveland State. The winners of the Association of Mid-Continent Universities. They not only won the regular season, they won the tournament. This is Ralph Hacker along with Dan Bonner from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. And we're ready to go. Eric Mudd, 33, moving into jump as he jumps against Andre Harris of Indiana. The officials are Tom Crane, Merv Shapiro, and Blaine Sylvester. Indiana's Hoosiers. What will the defense be for Cleveland State, Dan Bonner? Well, Cleveland State is starting the game uh, in a man-to-man -man defense. Something that didn't work on yesterday as Indiana goes on top. Two to nothing as Winston Morgan, who's averaging 6.8 a game, gets it. What about Indiana defensively? Always the man-to-man. -man. Always the man-to-man. -man. Cleveland State is not really very comfortable playing in a half-court offensive set. They would much prefer to cause some turnovers and fast breaks. Cleveland State with Clinton Smith, an outstanding basketball player for them. Eric Mudd. Cleveland State likes to take it on the inside as Brian has it blocked. The one problem that Cleveland State may have among all the others today is they're not great outside shooters. Cleveland State does not have a very good perimeter game, but they penetrate very well. There, Quentin Ramsey pitches it off to Eddie Bryant, who is a very good penetrator. Indiana, a little bad luck there. He stepped on the line. And on the inbounds play, Indiana deflected it and went out of bounds. Bobby Knight, outstanding head coach of Indiana, who has won two NCAA championships already in his career. And he's concerned about the physical capabilities of these kids from Cleveland State. They're very, very good athletes. This is the mouse, Ken McFadden. He allegedly scored 55 points on Pearl Washington in the playground game in New York City. The first shot of the day missed. And a foul on Indiana. And that's one thing that Indiana can't afford. When the ball goes up on the board, the Hoosiers have to make sure they get in position and block somebody out. Winston Morgan draws the first foul of the ball game. Bobby Knight calls Daryl Thomas over, as you see in the top of your screen, and talks with him. As Clinton Ram Ramsey, whose brother played at Ohio State, then is now playing with the New York uh, Nets. Clinton originally signed with Ohio State. He gets his first. I'm sure what Coach Bob Knight mentioned to Daryl Thomas, Ralph, was the fact that Ramsey's now at the line for two free throws when a blockout would have kept Cleveland State off the board. Now, here, here you see Cleveland State. This is their press. They play 94 feet. This is what they plan on doing to Indiana all day. It'll be out of bounds, Indiana. And I'll tell you what, Ralph, Indiana's got to do a better job handling the pressure than that. 
You get a look at Clinton Smith. Now he's six feet six. He's going to be matched up there trying to prevent the long pass. And that's a travel against Winston Morgan. It was an out of bounds play under the basket as opposed to after a shot. So Winston Morgan was not permitted to move. And Bobby Knight is questioning the officials wisdom on that. Yesterday, Kevin Mackey told me that he feels that his team can definitely win this ball game today. I think he's totally convinced. Of a foul is on Indiana. As Indiana's Rick Calloway draws his first team second. Again, Ralph, we point out that Cleveland State, while they do not have a good perimeter shooting game, they're all excellent athletes. They can all put the ball on the floor and drive to the basket. That's two good penetration moves we've seen in the last two possessions. Indeed. As Clinton Ramsey, a 6'5 junior out of Toledo, is at two in a row already, goes up there. All of Cleveland State's points have come from Ramsey, and they've all come from the free throw line. Ramsey averages 14.2 a game. It is there as the honorable mention AP All-American drops it through. It is 4-2. There you see it. Indiana hasn't gotten the ball in bounds yet. The pressure coming from 94 feet. And they don't stop either. They're going to stay right after Indiana. Winston Morgan. Winston Morgan leads Indiana in assists. The little man, Alford, has to score big today, but we get a foul down low against Cleveland State. It's going to be on Eric Mudd. When Indiana is able to get the ball across half court and get it set up in the half court offense, then the advantage moves over to Indiana. Out of bounds, Indiana. Steve Alford, number 12, to put it in. And here we see a 2 3 zone by Cleveland State after the out of bounds play. Alford gets it. And that's what Kevin Mackey most feared. He said they didn't have anybody who could guard Steve Alford. He says he's going to give up the 16-foot and beyond shot to Alford today. He says, we don't do a good job of picking up any team outside of the distance. The rebound belongs to Indiana as Andre Harris, who's averaging five and a half a game, rips it off. And Andre Harris has uh, rebounded in double figures for the last three or four games by Indiana. And he's a key player for the Hoosiers. Steve Alford, the only active collegiate who played in the 1980 for Olympic Games misses it. Thus far, Indiana's doing a nice job getting back on defense after a missed shot. They worked very hard on that in practice yesterday. It is six to four. Cleveland State out on top. The score was tied at two all. Then Indiana for Cleveland State but on top five four. And they've done it again. This is the mouse, McFadden. That is Kevin Mackey, who's won 62 games and lost 37 at Cleveland. Wide open, Indiana's Darrell Thomas gets his first two. That's the way you beat a press, Ralph. You get the ball down the court and make the opposition pay for pressing you. That's the first time Indiana has looked good against it in three trips down the court. Jump ball, nice move by Indiana. Stu Robinson doing an excellent job. Again, this comes from the fact that Indiana is not really concerned about the outside shooting ability of Cleveland State. You can see Robinson, as soon as that ball goes inside, he goes down to help out. Nice play. Robinson, of course, started 14 games last year. He started five in the middle of this season. He's in now replacing Winston Morgan of Indiana. First substitution by Indiana, but we'll see many more by Cleveland Clinton, State. Clinton Smith gets it, his fourth point. As a matter of fact, Cleveland State starters only average 25 and a half minutes a game. There's nobody on the team that averages more than 25 minutes. They play 10 guys and they run, in, run them in and, out, in and out. Indiana trails by four as Alford is picked up by McFadden. They trail by two now as Darrell Thomas gets his fourth point. Morgan has two, Alford has two. You can easily see the, contra the contrast in this game. If Indiana is able to get it down the court and set up in the half court offense, that's a foul inside. The foul is going to be on Cleveland State's Clinton Smith, his first illegal pick. As Cleveland State makes a change already, they get Bob Crawford, the number one man off the bench coming in. And Paul Stewart as well comes in the game. Number 30, Paul Stewart, is a singer. He sings in his spare time. Went to school in Alabama, only stayed a semester and transferred away to Cleveland State. It is out of bounds. That will go to Cleveland State. They put the pressure on Alfred. Let's look at Alford and see what kind of move he makes here. We talked about Steve Alford. There he is. He elbows McFadden, then just loses his balance. Nobody from Cleveland State even touched the ball, but it was that pressure that forced the turnover by Alford. Cleveland State leads by two. That's Bryant, three left-handers on this team. Tough shot by McFadden. Good defense by the Hoosiers. Out of bounds. 
it's going to go to Indiana. Saw some work by the Indiana inside players. Ricky Callaway making a nice move up the court. That's one of the reasons why he was the freshman of the year in the Big Ten. He was an outstanding player in Cincinnati in high school. He won the AAA Player of the Year award as a senior. Saw the strength of Andre Harris there, too. He was just trying to get a handle on the ball and nearly tipped it in. Robinson taking over the point position. The zone has changed. They've gone to a zone, as a matter of fact, after Cleveland State had opened man-to-man. You know, now this is the third zone they've shown. This is a 1-2-2. Two, two. Excellent pass inside by Stu Robbins. Andre Harris gets it, and our game is tied for the second time at 10 all. 15.46 to go in the first half. Eddie Bryant. It's important for Alford and for now Stu Robinson in the game to cut down on the penetration by the Viking guards. They don't want to let those guys loose in the middle. McFadden, they can't afford to let him get away. McFadden is number 10. This is Bryant at 5'10". They say he can easily dunk the ball. His liability today may be, though, Ralph, that he cannot shoot very well from the outside. Bad pass on the inside that Alford had smelled out. Well, I don't know who's kidding who there. I don't know what Bryant's doing trying to post Alford up inside. Alford, one-on-one -on -one against McFadden. Rebound belongs to Cleveland State. Crawford got a piece of that on the way up. McFadden. Stewart as Cleveland State goes back out on top. Paul Stewart, who's averaging 4.7 a game, does it? How long can Indiana take this intense defense that Cleveland State is putting up? Will they break it like they did there? The foul is going to be on Ed Bryant before the shot. Ed Bryant out of Dorchester, Massachusetts, commits the foul. We've got three more substitutions coming into the game for Cleveland State. We'll see that kind of running in and out of the game all day. Ray Salters is one of those. Hood is into the ball game. I thought he got him before the shot. Obviously not. As they go up to the free throw line, it is Stu Robinson, who's hitting 83.3 from the free throw line this year, looking for his first point since he checked into the game. 14.40 to go. First half. Stu Robinson. You talked about the Cleveland State pressure, Ralph, and most of that pressure is in the immediate area where the ball's thrown in. There's four guys trying to trap, and if Indiana can get past that first pressure, then they've got a four-on-one or a three-on-one coming down the other way. The game is tied again. Stu Robinson hit it. 14.40 to go in the first half of play. Indiana and Cleveland State all tied up at 12-all, and there's a timeout on the court with a score all tied at 12. Go! Go! Are you or someone in your family looking for a new mobile home? Bill Frazier for Delaware County Mobile Home Sales. We have the home you're looking for at the north edge of Muncie. Corner Here you go. This is Ralph Acker along with Dan Bonner. Indiana and Cleveland State. Indiana has never been to the front of the ball game, and they trail by as many as four down. The pressure defense of Cleveland State is really looking good. Cleveland State has been able to force a couple of turnovers. There you get a look at the score. Michigan leading Akron 67 to 62 in the second half. Under a minute to go, we understand, in that game. We've got a long way to go on this one. Cleveland State getting the ball in bounds. They've already made a complete change in their lineup. Hood is in, number four, and a whistle. It goes out of bounds to Indiana. A turnover. As Slattery is the man who turned it over for Cleveland State. Got an entirely different five in the game. Now, there's that pressure. There's three guys triple teaming right there. And Callaway, the freshman, gets it away into front court to Alford. And he wastes no time as Alford knocks the bottom up for his fourth point, and Indiana has their first lead of the day. Another foul. This time it's going to be on Indiana, and it's on Ricky Callaway. That's number two on the freshman. The game has gotten rather physical inside early. The players are going at one another underneath the basket. That time Callaway got caught. I thought the time previously down the court, Bob Crawford lit him up with an elbow, but nobody saw Crawford. Sean Hood, number four out of Boston. Bob's the ball in bounds. This is Bob Crawford. Rejection and a goaltending call against Indiana. Bob Crawford ties the ball game up at 14 all. Get a chance, Kevin. That's Kevin Mackey right there. He's very happy about the turn of events. Once again, you see it, Cleveland State battling very hard on the board. The hook by Crawford, but he follows his own shot as nobody blocks him out. Clearly a goal 10 by Harris. And for the second time this afternoon, Indiana fails to get it in bounds. It is out of bounds to Cleveland State. 14-14. Cleveland State just continues to create opportunities for themselves with that pressing defense. 
Steve Corbett over the hood. Thirteen fifty-five to go. First half of play. We're tied up here in the Carrier Dome. 14-14. Ralph Acker along with Dan Bonner. Indiana had gone to the front, but a goaltending call on Indiana tied the ball game up again. Indiana's been having some trouble handling the Cleveland State pressure. Rebound slammed down by Andre Harris. That was a rebound with authority. Nobody was taking that from him. The White goes to Indiana as Callaway gets the bucket and he draws the foul. The foul will be on Steve Corbin. Ricky Callaway gets his first two points of the day. Indiana this time does a nice job getting the ball down the court in the fast break situation. Excellent pass into Callaway, who's able to ignore the pressure by Paul Stewart and lay it in. This is the only the second time this afternoon that Indiana has been to the front. As Bob Knight calls Alford back to talk to him. Cleveland State, surprisingly enough, has done a nice job on the boards against a team from Indiana that is much larger. Cleveland State has some real leapers inside. They're quick guys, and lots of times those kind of players are very difficult to block out. Cleveland State was the second-leading scoring team in the nation this year, averaging 90.2 points a game. Boy, what a rebound by Harris. He didn't get it, but he tipped it away from Crawford. Now it's Stu Robinson to pull it down. Here's Alford. Nice Great pass. pass. Harris gets the bucket and a foul of Indiana State. Indiana has been able the last two trips down the court to play in transition. Give you a chance. There's Alford with the pump fake right there. Tremendous pass to Callaway. Now everybody's got to go over to help out against Callaway. Nobody's able to block out Andre Harris, and he just works the boards to perfection. Paul Stewart was in battling along with Crawford on the rebound, and Crawford is the man who draws the personal. Harris had a problem early in the season, Ralph, getting in foul trouble. Lately, he's been able to stay out of foul trouble, and he's that's 5.4 is deceiving. He's been averaging in double figures over the last four or five games. And Indiana's missed two in a row from the free throw line, but their biggest lead is on the boards now at 18-14, 12.48 to go. Cleveland State has really been having a tough time playing, trying to play in the half-court offense against the good Indiana man-to-man. -man. You notice how the Indiana man-to-man -man is packed back inside. They're not really trying to deny the outside passing lane. They've made it 18 16. I think Bob Knight will give that up. Ramsey got it. And they come back with their original five for Cleveland State. Ramsey Smith, Mudd, McFadden, and Bryant. Wholesale substitutions. This is Alford wide open. Get up. Take a rebound by Indiana. Andre Harris gets number six. Good hustle by Daryl Thomas. He got the ball, and not only that, he was able to stay in bounds and make a nice pass to Harris. Hoosiers by four. Letton Smith. Or Ramsey, rather, as Ramsey gets number eight. That's the penetration that Cleveland State can perform so well. Hoosiers again taking it coast to coast as Stu Robinson gets his first field goal. Nice, nice point. Nice job against the press, but you see Cleveland State comes right back. They're not going to stop the whole game. Stu Robinson has done a nice job keeping the ball out of McFadden's hand. Foul on Indiana, as you hear <laughs> Daryl Thomas say, oh, ref, not me. That is the fourth team foul against Indiana. We mentioned that it's important for Indiana to stop the Cleveland State penetration, and the difficulty about that is not only the guards from Cleveland State that can penetrate well. Mudd and Ramsey and Smith are all very good off the dribble. Indiana's going to really have to be on their toes. Mudd up at the line. Eric Mudd out of Cleveland gets his first. He hits 61.4 from the free throw line. A 6'8 junior. Unless anyone thinks that Cleveland State can't play with a team like this, Cleveland State beat DePaul by 15, lost by only four at Ohio State. The only two common opponents they had were Ohio State and Michigan. Of course, Michigan beat Indiana twice. They also beat Cleveland State 105 to 85. Well, of course, Kent State's a common opponent, too, but Indiana won that one by 13, and Cleveland State won by about 40. 22 to 20. <laughs> Indiana going to the boards much harder than they did early in the game, but Andre Harris just couldn't control it. 
Cleveland State does not appear to be very fundamentally sound with the blockouts, Ralph. They prefer to try to use their athletic ability to go after the ball. I think they would be wise to get in their bodies against somebody and blocking out. You said in our opening remarks a comment that was passed along by Kevin Mackey yesterday as the foul is going to be on Andre Harris of Indiana is that he didn't go after the top of the line players and he went after those that have been passed over. And these players can really scrap inside. They know what to do with the ball when they get it. Excellent play by Mudd, trying to post up in there. He just simply would not let Andre Harris around, and that caused the foul. That was the fifth team foul against Indiana. Indiana has committed five team fouls. Cleveland State likewise. Indiana, again, not playing in the passing lanes, but trying to pack it back inside. Did not do a very good job that time. Excellent move again inside by Mudd. And Mudd has just tied the game at 22 all. 10.45 to go. Andre Harris of Indiana. He unties it. Nice move by Andre Harris. Indiana, the last few minutes, has really handled the pressure much better. That's bad. And he's fouled. Great move by the Mouse. And Stu Robinson draws the sixth Indiana foul. The and Mouse is a legend around. You get a good look at him right there. Is a legend around New York City playgrounds. Never played high school ball. Got all his seasoning on the New York City playgrounds in an AAU competition. You can see, see Stu Robinson hit him in the chest and down the mouse goes. I don't think Robinson really hit him that hard. The mouse is a 21-year-old freshman. And that's what he admits to being. The mouse has four points today, though. He could be the most exciting player that anybody will see in any, any region of the NCAA this year. And he generally has his big games against the big teams. 25-24, Cleveland State. As Daryl Thomas puts Indiana back out on top. The Mouse trying to break along the baseline. It's knocked away out of bounds. Indiana made an interesting move, Ralph, after the first couple minutes. Alford is not really handling the ball in the front court area. Indiana is using other people to break through the pressure, and then Alford down on the other end of the court has had open shots and has been really passing the ball very well. Clinton Ranch chases down the errant ball. Bryant. <laughs> Put Cleveland State back out on top by one. As Bryant gets his first. And steals the ball. Ramsey, they lead by three. Ramsey gets the crowd going here in the carrier dome. You look at there's four Cleveland State guys down on that end. There's a foul that time on McFadden, but you can see that if Indiana can get past that pressure, they're going to have a two-on-one or a three-on-one down on their offensive end. But to the credit of Cleveland State, they're doing a nice job of defensive pressure. And you can see Bob Knight is climbing all over his players. That was Stu Robinson. Indeed. There's a timeout on the floor here in the Carrier Dome with the score. Cleveland State 29, Indiana 26. 9.49 to go in the first half. Cleveland State leads it 29-26 over Indiana. And Cleveland State has been all over Indiana trying to get the ball in bounds. This is a perfect illustration. Now just watch the way when the ball goes in, the guys from Cleveland State are all over the place. And what Bob Knight was telling Stu Robinson on that play is, for heaven's sakes, don't throw the ball to somebody standing in the corner where it's very easy to double team. Look at the turnovers. Cleveland State has forced 22.7 turnovers this year. Indiana has committed 13.3 a game. Indiana getting it in. Stu Robinson. Look at the turnovers today. 7-3. To Indiana. Almost number 8 for Indiana. And Cleveland State really gambles trying to force the turnover. Get up, get up, get up. Also, with a great pass on the inside. He's done a lot of that here in this half of play. Bryant. Watch out, Trey. The steal was by Ramsey. These guys don't quit, Ralph. They continue to go after it. That was a bad shot by Bryant. Good defense by Alford. The Syracuse crowd, and they're already in here because their team plays tonight. They bought up 17,000 tickets, have swung to the side of Cleveland State. That's the penetration ability of Clinton Ramsey. He went right by Andre Harris. Cleveland State has moved ahead by their biggest margin of the day by five as Alfred misses this one. Holloway goes underneath. Back up, and it is there by Daryl Thomas. As Thomas gets number eight, quite a battle going on here in the Carrier Dome. The pressing defense of Cleveland State certainly causing the Hoosiers of Indiana problems. 
Certainly is. So far, Cleveland State has been able to play pretty much their game, running and pressing. It is there. What a shot by Clinton Smith. Now you say, well, that's an incredible shot. He's not going to make that very often, but that's the kind of shots that Cleveland State often lives and dies with. They don't put the ball up with great rotation. They don't use great form. It is playground style that Cleveland State puts forth in every ball game, and they've won 27 of those this year. Ramsey. Oh, what a play by Ramsey. Three on two. And the foul is on Indiana's Stu Robinson. Ramsey made a great play tipping the ball over the head of Stu Robinson, who I think gave up on it because he was standing there waiting for the ball to get to him. Here you get a chance to look at it. Ramsey just never stops hustling after the ball. Then again, taps it back to Bryant. Down on the fast break. They missed the layup here, but watch Mudd stay right after it. You got to wonder where all the guys from Indiana are. There were only two people in your picture. If he had have made the bucket, then it would have been a part of the highlight film at the end of the year. Bob Knight paces the sideline, but very quiet for most of the afternoon. Eric Mudd at the line. 8:03. We said that Cleveland State did not act as if they were intimidated by having to go up against Indiana, and certainly we've seen no indication of any intimidation factor so far. Cleveland State stepping up with Mud, dropping it in. We've got Hood into the lineup for Cleveland State. Corbin gets ready to go out as McFadden comes back in, replacing him. In just a little bit, they'll make another change, but it'll be for the shooter. Also into the ball game, Clinton Smith for Indiana or for Cleveland State. Now what has happened is they're going to make McFadden go back out of the game because no time has run off the clock. McFadden was in the game. They took him out. I think Kevin Mackey just wanted to tell him something. But until a couple seconds run off that clock or one second anyhow, the mouse cannot come back in the game. And they'll have to bring Steve Corbin back into the game as Mudd gets ready to put another one up. That's a good job by referee Tom Frame. Somebody was in the lane too soon. And a foul on Indiana. I could not tell whether it was Callaway who was in the lane too soon or Harris who was in the lane too soon. Disregard the foul. Let's just call it in the lane too soon. <laughs> and you can see the mouse there. The poor mouse can't get back in the game. And he makes good the second time as he gets six. Back into the game, Bob Cropper. Uh, Cleveland State, along with the mouse, McFadden. 8.03 to go, first half. Indiana is trailing by seven points. There you see Cleveland State can really do it all. There we see Clinton Smith wiping up the floor. Wiping up the floor. They've, they've done everything so far. Kevin Mackey just shouts the instructions out. He's telling them how to play basketball, not how to clean the floor. Anyway. And they're still going to get McFadden out of the game. McFadden cannot come back in because no time is run off the clock. We need to tell him he needs to know somebody <laughs> to get back into this game. That's right. Maybe if he had a press pass, he could get in. Tom Frame's got to wonder what they're trying to pull the wool over his eyes over there or what. Indiana just beating the count. Now they drop back. They protected the front court. Once the Morgan is a turnover again. No, it didn't, it went, didn't go off Morgan. I thought it might have bounced off Winston Morgan. But Indiana backs up. I don't understand what they're backing up. And here comes McFadden. He's finally able to get back in the game. The crowd loves the little man from New York City. It is into Stu Robinson, and he falls. The jump ball. It will go to Indiana on the alternating possession. I'll tell you, Stu Robinson has to be very grateful that Ray Slater decided he was going to lean over and try to pick up the ball. Slater's a big guy, and he dived on top there. Stu Robinson might have been hurt. Robinson has played pretty well since he came in, replacing Winston Morgan. Steve Alford has not had a good afternoon. He is only two out of seven from the outside, but the turnovers are the thing that have really hurt Indiana. Look at the points after those. That's that. That's Cleveland. That's a big part of Cleveland State's offense is their pressing defense. Here it is again. It's man-to-man -man defense down on this end of the court. Alford. Winston Morgan. Now to Stu Robinson. Sort of man-to-man. -man. Anytime the ball comes by, everybody's reaching for it. What effort. 
Rebound is controlled by Bob Crawford. McFadden. Nearly walking with a basketball was Salters. Back to McFadden. This is Sean Hood, his running mate now at guard. Hood is number four. Salters looks like he wouldn't lose the ball. It's really a muscular guy out there. Very much in contrast to the other Cleveland State players who are all sort of thin. Yesterday, he clashed going for the bucket with McFadden. They jostled around with a few good-natured barbs. That's Crawford from the outside, his fourth point. And it's a 37-28 Cleveland State nine-point lead. And here's Alford breaking the pressure this time as opposed to being down on the offensive end for the shot. But Cinderella now leave and live in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. It is there. That's Rick Calloway getting number four. Cleveland State playing the kind of game the Vikings want to play. That's going to be a foul against Bob Crawford. Trying to set the screen inside. That's a second foul on Crawford, and both of them have been just that way. Indiana playing the tough man-to-man -to -man defense inside. Bob Crawford trying to spring one of his teammates loose is going to stand up. You can see he's moving, trying to body block Ricky Calloway as he tries to get Ray Salters loose. Ramsey came back into the ball game for Cleveland State. Salters goes out of the contest as Cleveland State has their own little huddle down here. Six minutes, 13 seconds to go. We're in the first half. It is 37 to 30. That was the seventh team foul, so we're in the bonus situation as Ricky Calloway steps up. Indiana has not hit well from the free throw line at all this afternoon. And Crawford has done a nice job on the boards. Boy, and there's Crawford and, and Ricky Calloway, Daryl Thomas. They're really going at one another. Sean Hood with the ball again. He's one of those penetrators. It is out of bounds. It was partially blocked, and it'll go out of bounds to Cleveland State. Up, up. That time, Ramsey did not give a pump fake like he's given in there previously, and as a result, Daryl Thomas was able to time that shot and blocked it out of bounds. What a pass. Indiana controlling the boards as Daryl Thomas brings it down. He and Andre Harris are the leading scorers for Indiana with eight apiece. The leading scorer of the game is Cleveland's Clinton Ramsey. It is there. As Kevin Mackey said, Ralph, they really don't have anybody to match up against Steve Alford. And as we said earlier, they're going to let him shoot the long bomb today. They're going to give it up to him. This is McFadden. Boom! Indiana keeping Cleveland State from getting the second shot. 37-32. Indiana down by five. Alford again. The quick hands of Steve Alford on the release. Alford wasn't set that time. His feet weren't in very good position. That was an off-balance jumper. Not a good shot by Alford. That's a walk. Ramsey dragging the pivot foot. A turnover for Cleveland State. It's number 44. Clinton Ramsey did it. Four minutes, 57 seconds to go from the carrier dome. There's timeout on the court with a score. Cleveland State, there's some appreciative grandkids for you. <laughs> this telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. And any use of this program without express written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. Indiana against the pressure, getting Indiana trying to. Winston Morgan bouncing the ball off the legs of Paul Stewart. And you can hear Bob Knight in the background saying, you people have to move into the middle of the court. Alford getting it in. Just Jim Robinson. Out to Winston Morgan. Cleveland State playing in a man-to-man -man defense, trying very hard to create a helter-skelter atmosphere and doing a pretty good job right now. Callaway, as Callaway comes up with a six point. He got inside of it that time and had a little six or seven foot easy shot. That little shot off the dribble is really an excellent move by Callaway. Thirty-seven.
37-34, Cleveland State. Cleveland State somehow looks uncomfortable in this half-court game, Ralph. If Indiana can force this more often, they'd be in good shape. It is there. They didn't look too uncomfortable on that shot as Eric Mudd gets number eight. They're not supposed to be able to shoot from the outside, Ralph. They learned something this afternoon. Indiana getting it down low. And Cleveland State coming off with a rebound. Clinton Ramsey did a nice job to get back and help out. Thomas had position inside, but Ramsey cut him off. Quick shot. It's there. Make it 41-34. No worry on the part of Kevin Mackey about patience. His guys go down and fire. Steve Offer taking it on the inside and coming up with his eighth point. Nice move by Offord. He was one on two, but was able to score anyway. Five-point ball game. Indiana behind him. Paul Stewart, the transfer from Alabama. Out to Hood. Cleveland State playing with socks off of Indiana. They lead it by five as they miss on the inside. Indiana has not been able to go back to the front since we had a 22-22 ball game. Cleveland State has done nearly everything right as they draw the foul there on Paul Stewart. Cleveland State has played exactly that kind of scrappy game. Indiana has to be very careful when they come down with the rebound because Cleveland State is not willing to concede. That particular time it was a foul, but since Cleveland State plays 10, 11 guys, they can afford some fouls. Steve Alford starting to assert himself a moment ago as he came up with his eighth point. But at the line is Daryl Thomas. Free throws is something Indiana has not shot well today. One shot! One! And in a game, in a dogfight like Indiana's involved in right now with Cleveland State, they're going to need to convert opportunities like this. They missed this one. Daryl Thomas has done a nice job on the boards for the men in green. Hauls it down. Indiana State has just come up, or Cleveland State, I should say, has just come up with their 10th rebound. Indiana has 11. Clinton Smith missed that shot. He's not a good outside shooter. Indiana cut off the penetration, which was a good move. Stu Robinson with the basketball. Stu Robinson to Winston Morgan. This has been a combination that's been in there for a long time for Indiana. That's going to be on Daryl Thomas, I do believe. He was battling Eric Mudd inside for position, and Mudd that time got the better of it. Look at it again and see if you're right. The inside play has gotten fierce. You can see now, there's Daryl Thomas. Eric Mudd is 33, Thomas is 24, and clearly as Thomas tries to get position, he pushes Mudd out of the way, and you simply can't do that. He just picks up his second foul, the seventh foul against Indiana, Kevin Mackey. That second foul by Daryl Thomas is going to cause Thomas to go to the bench for the last 217 of this half. Todd Meyer is going to come in to play the post. Out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. <laughs> It's the first free throw, I believe, that has been officially missed by Cleveland State today. And you can see, even on the missed free throw, Cleveland State comes back with the press. Cleveland State leading by four, 41-37. Two minutes to go in the first half. Winston Morgan to Alford. He's taken ten shots in the first half. Alford has really looked for the jump shot in this half. He went through a period of about five minutes and never had the ball toward the hoop. Chris Meyer gets it. Meyer cuts it down to a 41-39 game. That was a good job by Indiana there. Good movement inside, created a mismatch. Meyer against the 5'10 Bryant. Indiana capitalized on it. Bobby Knight says this Indiana team has given him as much satisfaction as any Indiana team he has coached. They have been people who have achieved every goal that he set forth. And when Bobby sets up a goal, you can bet it's high. That's right, but of course, that isn't helping him out here in this half against Cleveland State. 41, 39, about at 14. 14 seconds on the shot clock. It's there. Now that's Clinton Smith with the jump shot. He's a much better jump shooter off the dribble than he is off the stand. A minute to go in the first half. Then they got a trail. It's by four. One thing that this press has done is it's taken. There's Alfred. Yeah, he can fill the sack as he gets number 10. Steve Alford, the coach's son from Newcastle, Indiana, gets 22.4 per ball game. Just comes up with 10. Indiana's done a nice job battling back into the game. There's 40 seconds left in the half. There's 35 seconds left on the shot clock. So we've got a three or four second differential here. And 
Cleveland State is going to be content to hang on to it, run the clock down, try to get the last shot of the half. It's got to be a big morale boost for Cleveland State to go to the dressing room leading Indiana. That's right. If they can hang on, they'll have the two-point lead. And we said they were cocky coming in. If anything need, needed to convince them, this is it. It is inside. It is no good. Follow-up shot. They'll lead by four if everything goes right, but maybe not. As Clinton Smith gets number 10. Indiana's got time. Six seconds. Four. And that's off Stu Robinson, I do believe. Oh, they're going to give that to Indiana with two seconds to go. Kevin Mackey says, no, he was off of him. Bob Knight says, I didn't see it. He looks very relaxed at the moment. There's Kevin Mackey. Said, watch the lob. They're concerned about a lob inside to Andre Harris. It is to Meyer. It is up. It is no good. What a first half of action we have had here in the Carrier Dome. Indiana and Cleveland State. Bob Knight walks off the court with his team. He'll have the chat with him, and he'll be back again to play Cleveland State for another 20 minutes of basketball here in the Carrier Dome. That's the end of the first half with a score. Cleveland State 45, Indiana 41. We'll be back after these messages. 45-41, Cleveland State with the ball to start the second half of play. Of course, Indiana defensively, man-to-man, -man, blocking the shot. You can see an interesting feature of the Cleveland State offense. Even though their guards are small, that time McFadden was trying to post up inside against Stu Robinson. Even though that's the case, they still try to get their guards inside, let Bryant and McFadden operate down there. Mudd, Mudd makes it 47-41 as he comes up with number 10. They call their offense for Cleveland State the Funk and Dunk. Callaway. Rebound! 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 And a foul is going to be on Eric Mudd, his second foul of the game. I'm sure Bob Knight at halftime talked about two things. One was the turnovers, and the other one was the rebounding. And that time, Indiana took both of those items to heart. They broke the press very easily down the court. Then they got in good position for a second shot. Inbound pass to Stu Robinson. And on the inbounds play, Cleveland State showing us that 3-2 zone with Ramsey out on the top. They steal it. Another Indiana turnover. That is the first in this half. That's the 13th for the game. Ramsey, the leading scorer of the game. They got a hand on the ball. It was knocked away by Andre Harris. Kevin Mackey is up wanting to know where the foul call was. Looked like a good no call from our vantage point. But Ramsey, once again, showing you that ability to put it on the deck and get to the basket. With the first block shot of the ball game, officially. Cleveland State by six. We played exactly a minute of the second half. Oh, most walking. Boy, that's a great athletic move, though, to hold the pivot foot, and I think he did so successfully. I agree. Yeah. Now we've got a foul down low on Indiana. It's going to be on Daryl Thomas, number 24. That'll be his third. Once again, you see the overall athletic ability of the Vikings from Cleveland State. Mudd made a nice fake to draw Thomas toward him and then showed his ability to put the ball on the deck and go by. Jadlow is going to have to come in now for Daryl Thomas, who just picked up his third foul. Jadlow is a junior college transfer. It is inbound. Cleveland State has it. Cleveland State is led by as many as nine as they get this one. This is Clinton Smith getting number 10. The press that has been there since they left the dressing room. I don't understand why Harris would just throw it right back to Callaway like that. You should attack up the court, not throw it backwards. The foul is going to be on Clinton Smith. He nods in agreement. His second. Indiana, Indiana, you can see, is obviously trying to get the ball in the middle of the court. But now here's Callaway trying to bring it up against the pressure. That was an obvious foul against Smith. But again, I don't understand why you would throw it back to Callaway after you have the ball in the middle of the press. It seems like maybe Indiana should take the ball up court. Stu Robinson getting it in play. Winston Morgan did not start this half. Stolen away. That is 15 turnovers now for Indiana. And they just took it from Callaway. He got himself right in the double team and didn't have a prayer. McFadden, who didn't take an awful lot of shots in the first half. He's number 10. Watch for him to explode. There it is. The little left-hander from New York City gets his seventh point. And it's a 10-point lead. That's the biggest lead of the ball game. As I said before, could Cinderella have moved to Cleveland? Certainly could have. Indiana wants a timeout. 
And it comes after we have played only two minutes and eight seconds of the second half of play with timeout on the court. The score is Cleveland State 51, Indiana 41. Grab the news right at your door. Get everything the paper's for. You can't lose when you grab the news. It's what, where, when, why, and who. What's just happened and what's to do. Newsworthy people like to grab the news. Stay in touch, learn so much. People on the Hey, Vern. Dell and Oldsmobile is having a very special sale. It's a sale you can look right in the eye. It's called the Let's Face It sale. Yes, Vern, each new Dell and Olds with this charming little tag has a very special price on the back. Take it at face value. They're the best deals in town. It's a price you can face and a face you can love. I'm so excited about this new sale, Vern, that I'm beside myself. Know what I mean? This is the first round of the East Regional in Syracuse, New York. Ralph Hacker with Dan Bonner. You see Cleveland State leading by 10. And Cleveland State has built that defense with some scrappy, hard play with a pressing defense that has really caused some problems for Indiana. They forced Indiana into 15 turnovers already. They have almost another one there. It will be another Indiana turnover. They have averaged 22.7 turnovers a ball game. Forced. Bob Knight's got to be careful. He doesn't need a technical foul right now. But again, great hustle by Cleveland State to force that turnover. Ed Bryant to Ramsey. The basket will not be there, and he charged. Clinton Ramsey draws number one. Let's look at some other scores going on. 49-45, Alabama, the Southeastern Conference, ahead of uh, Xavier. And we've got 35-24, UNLV of the Northeast Louisiana. 17.30 to go. 51-41. Indiana, Stu Robinson getting it, and a foul is going to be on Bryant. He shook himself up. Again, Indy, er, Cleveland State has done a nice job hustling all over the basketball court. This is a very difficult pass to try to throw. Morgan throwing it all the way across the court. Bryant just slightly too slow to get there. He ran in pretty hard to Stu Robinson, I think fell down on, what do you think he hurt, his shoulder? I thought it was his wrist the way that he came down, but I don't know for the moment, as he's just down to our left as we take a closer look at him. Ed Bryant, they have already brought into the ball game Sean Hood to replace him. As you see, Ed Bryant, who has scored only two points, a 5'10 junior out of Dorchester, Massachusetts, leads the team at assists coming into the game with 137. Cleveland State showing a man-to-man -man defense on the half-court level, but as you can see right there, they come to trap every opportunity. Winston Morgan is in, down on the wing. That's Stu Robinson getting his sixth point of the game. 51-43, IU down. Now, Indiana's really going to have to tighten up on the defensive end of the court. Hood to McFadden. Ramsey. What a pass by Smith. Smith and Ramsey teaming up. And boy, the crowd is really behind Cleveland State right now. Let's look at it again while well, we've got a foul in Indiana to go along with it. Clinton Smith operating down low against Andre Harris, picks up his dribble. Nobody's paying any attention to Ramsey. Jad Lowe lost track of him. Great pass by Smith. Jad Lowe found him and committed to foul. And at the line. Clinton. Ramsey. That's his second miss in a row from the free throw line. This equals the longest lead of the afternoon for Cleveland State. They trapped it. Winston Morgan. Andre Harris. Andre Harris gets double figures. His second Hoosier to do so. He slapped it down to the sideline. 
Good defense by Harris. Harris saw the long pass coming down the court to Clinton Smith and got up there just enough to bother it, so Smith did not have very good balance coming down. Long way to go this afternoon here in Syracuse. 16 and a half left of the game. It's to an eight-point contest, 53-45. Indiana down. Alford. A foul is going to be on Clinton Smith, his third. That was really a break for Indiana. Alford had lost control of the basketball. Alford, even though he's being subjected to a great deal of pressure, you'll be able to see him here as he's operating inside. Gets the ball on. Now watch that pass. Even under all that pressure, he's still able to make the great pass. Alford was most valuable player as a freshman. The only person at Indiana in basketball to have ever done that. Came back to repeat as a sophomore. Most certainly, he'll come back to do it again this year. Cleveland State in that 3-2 zone on the out-of-bounds situation. Winston Morgan across the zone to Alford. They said the little man had to score a lot today for Indiana to win. Well, he now has picked up 12. 53-47. That's good offensive patience by Indiana. They didn't hurry anything. They waited until they got the shot the one they wanted. John Hood to Crocker. Oh! oh. Tap in. The tap in. Paul by Stewart. Was, was was Paul St was it? I, no, I thought it was Paul Stewart that got it. I'm... One or the other, the bottom line is Indiana still failing to block out on the offensive boards and Cleveland State taking advantage of it. Alford makes a good move. Beautiful pass. Jadlow making his move after the gorgeous pass by Alford and his foul. Jadlow had, had a tough time that particular trip down the court as he set up in position. Bob Crawford almost leveled him with an elbow, but he did not pay any attention. He goes across. Nobody goes with him. Good pass inside. That is the sixth team foul against Cleveland State. And we have played less than five minutes of the second half. And at the line is Todd Jadlow. He averages 2.7 a game. And he's being asked to carry a pretty big load here, Ralph. Daryl Thomas went out early with three personal fouls. Jadlow answers the call. 55-49, back to a six-point game. Indiana, of course, stays with a man-to-man defense, and they continue to be dropped down inside. Now, we just said before that Crawford had hit Jadlow with an elbow. We come down to this end of the court. Crawford and Jadlow mixed, mixed up again. That time, the foul's on Jadlow. It is, and it is a second. That is a third team foul against Indiana. It means that Cleveland will get the ball out of bounds. And it never fails. When you get hit and you retaliate, you're usually the one who gets caught. And to McFadden, a quick jumper. McFadden gets his ninth point. And he really uses the backboard very well. He gets a foul right there. But again, the pressing defense continues to create problems for Indiana. That pass back and across the across the court is a very tough one to throw. He is none too pleased about it. He wants to know why the foul. He's out of the game. The foul is going to be on uh, McFadden. His second, Sean Hood, comes in to replace him. They'll let him cool down a little bit. And at the line is Steve Alford. Through his career at Indiana, he has averaged right at 90%. Coming into the game, Alford's hitting 86.8 for this year. Very sweet sound as it goes through there. That's a shooter at the free throw line, all right. On two occasions this year, he's hit 10 for 10. How'd they call that one? AOR. All over the rim. <laughs> They're going to have to get some paint up there and slop it off. Indiana back within six. Boy, that's good defense by Winston Morgan. He wouldn't let Salter square up to the basket. Crawford. Put the move on it, and he got it. Big move by Sean Hood. Again, they may not be outside shooters, but they can sure make some penetration and get some shots inside. An eight-point ball game, Cleveland State. Winston Morgan, Andre Harris. Jadlow. Looks like a walk. Robinson with it. 3-2 zone still by Cleveland State. Alford trying to draw that foul. It wasn't there. That was a nice move by Corbin to not foul. He was going to go up for that pump fake, but got himself down. Alford again. Alford from 22. 
Alford starting to get the range as he gets his 16th point. He's now tied Clinton Ramsey for high point honors for the game. Once again, Indiana showed excellent patience on offense. They've got to pick up the defense, which they're doing right now. Salters. Stewart with the ball. In this half, Cleveland State is 7 out of 10. A foul underneath is going to be on Indiana. Once again, the penetration killing Indiana. Sean Hood was able to drive down in the lane. When he drew the defense to him, nobody was there to block out Ray Salters. He got the rebound. Now he'll be going to the line. Andre Harris is the guilty party. That'll be Andre's second foul. And at the line, as you said, is Ray Salters. He's only hitting 59.6 from the charity stripe this year. He'll have two tries. It's interesting. He's 6'2". He plays a position inside. He weighs about 220 pounds. And both you and I were questioning the fact as to whether Ramsey is 6'5". After seeing him stand next to Salters yesterday, who stands 6'2". Well, either they measured Salters in a depression or they put Ramsey on a little stool when they did the measure. That's what they did to Leroy Bird of Kentucky. They put him on a stool and measured him. He became a 5'5". <laughs> The rebound, Cleveland State. They just scrapped it, scrapped Steve, it out of there. Steve Corbin took it away from Jadlow. Jad thought Jadlow had the ball, and Corbin took it right out of his hand. 13 and a half to go. Salters, the pushing foul is on Jadlow. And now he has picked up three. The man who replaced Daryl Thomas also has three, and he's on the bench. Once again, the Cleveland State team are, is showing you that throughout their lineup, whether it be a center or a forward or a guy like Salters who can come off the bench, they've got the ability to put the ball on the court and take it to the basket. Jadlow is just outclassed that far from the hoop. If Indiana can get it to their offensive court, they're winning the battle. We, we have walk to walk. Definitely. That was Eric Mott. Indiana is hitting four out of five from the outside in this half. They just haven't been able to get control of the basketball. The turnovers have been difficult for them. Cleveland State definitely playing the kind of game that Cleveland State wants to play. This is Alford. They need it in his hands. Jadlow. Cleveland State controlling the boards again. That's Stewart with it. They waste no time. They go ahead 62-53. Oh, and Indiana lost it again. Another turnover by Indiana. Another one. Now you might say, Ralph, well, Cleveland State didn't cause that one because they didn't steal it. But Stu Robinson was so concerned about the pressure, as you'll get a chance to see here, that's a very bad pass that he throws inside to Winston Morgan. And he had to reach way out to try to pull it back, and it just fell off his fingertips. Inbounds pass. That's stolen away by Indiana. Very poor play by Cleveland State. They were trying to lob, and I don't think Stewart realized it. He went away. Alford. Big rebound by Mudd as he went over top of Indiana's Daryl Thomas. Under 13 minutes to go. You can just see Cleveland State, they didn't have any problem with lack of confidence to start, but their confidence level's going up and up. Around the horn, Hood. Salters. Oh, that, oh, gee, Salters almost got around Thomas and got his fourth foul. This is Stewart, back to Salters. They're a little bit more patient at this point. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Corbin backs away. Four seconds on the clock, they get it. That is Paul Stewart's fourth point. And here comes the press once again. I didn't know that Cleveland State could be that patient. I did not either. 11 points. That's the longest lead of the day for Cleveland State. Indiana's longest lead of the day was at four points. The shot is no good. And a foul is on Mudd of Cleveland State after the rebound. His third. He's the second foot player for Cleveland State to have picked up three fouls. That was a tough break for Cleveland State. I didn't really think that was such a good shot by Stu Robinson. I think he needed to wait a little longer before he let that one go. Mudd was actually in good position. The shot was so hard, though, it went right to Ricky Calloway. He's third at the line for Indiana. Ricky Calloway. Well, you talk about tradition. You talk about Indiana in basketball. Four national championships. They won it in 1940 when Marv Huffman led it. 53 when Bob Shalott set the all-time scoring record at Indiana. 76 with Kent Benson. 81 with Isaiah Thomas. The last two with Bob Knight at the helm. 
think the Vikings from Cleveland State care a bit for the Indiana tradition. They respect it and want to beat it. That's absolutely right, and they're sure they can. Earlier this afternoon, St. Joe's defeated Richmond up here, 60 to 59 at Syracuse. This is Ramsey. Ramsey has only taken one other shot in this half, and he hit it. That was good defense by Indiana. They forced the perimeter shot, which was their game plan. Callaway. Stu Robinson. Back to Callaway. The Vikings back to man-to-man -to -man against Indiana. Look at how hard they're working. That's Alford. Big move by Alford. And a good follow-up. We have a foul on Cleveland State. Foul's going to be against Clinton Ramsey. Alford is who created that play. Nice move down the middle by Steve Alford. Did you get a chance to see Alford penetrating to the basket right here? Good defense by Cleveland State. Now watch Alford in among the big guys, gets the tip, and that is enough to keep it alive for Daryl Thomas. As he goes back up, we're going to get a foul call against Clinton Ramsey. Chris Alford is 6'2", Ramsey was 6'5", and the man at the line who finally was able to get the ball in a foul is 6'7", Daryl Thomas. His 10th point. Three Indiana players have now reached double figures. Thomas now has the McFadden, the mouse, is back. Thomas was on the bench, so his presence for Indiana, I think, is very important. Clark Smith to Bryant. Bryant back in after being injured earlier. Ramsey, McFadden. Oh, and there's the fourth foul on Thomas. Good move by Eric Mudd coming across. He got good position on the side opposite the ball and then was able to cut very hard to the ball. Thomas was out of position. Four fouls on him. That is 16 fouls against Indiana. Bob Knight sits back and thinks about things in life. Looks like Bob Knight's going to leave him in with four fouls. 10.42 to go. Bryant has already used a dribble. Uh, he wasn't in any danger five seconds because nobody was guarding. We've got a charging foul. It's going to be on Clinton Smith. And now he has four fouls. And that's a big call. Clinton Smith is the leading, for, leading scorer for Cleveland State. Once again, he's going to try to use his quickness and ability to put the ball on the floor to get by. That's an awfully close call that could have been the fifth foul on Daryl Thomas. We'll have to wait to see how big a call that actually was. We've got 10.33 to wait. 64-57. And Bob Knight knows how big a call it was because he gets Daryl Thomas out of the game. I asked Kevin Mackey yesterday if he'd ever looked at Bob Knight's video on coaching. He says, I bought both of them. They're part of my library, and I watch them every year. The Jane Fonda of basketball coaches, Bob Knight. This is Stu Robinson as Robinson comes up with number eight. Nice move by Stu Robinson. That's something we haven't seen Indiana do very much of, and that's penetrate inside. And you see Indiana a little bit start to play their ball game now. They've cut it from 11 down to just a 64-59 game. Back to five. They are forcing Cleveland State to be much more patient and to play that half-court game. And when Cleveland State's not scoring, they can't set the press. We have passed the midway point of the second half. So good defense by Indiana is going to pay a couple of dividends. It's going to slow the Vikings down, and it's going to make it easier for the Hoosiers because they won't have to operate against the press. We have got a foul inside against Indiana. The foul looked to me like it was going to be on Todd Meyer. I think that is who their officials decided was the guilty culprit. Clinton Ramsey operating inside, and boy, does he draw a crowd. There's four Hoosiers there. That's a break for Cleveland State to have the foul in that situation. At the line, Clinton Ramsey, he has 16 points. That's Meyer. Ramsey's missed his last two from the free throw line. A lot of great teams, the NCAA this year. A lot of great coaches. Who, who's your choice for coach of the year, Dan Bonner? I really think that the coach of the year is Eddie Sutton. That'd be a great birthday present for him. He reached 50 yesterday. Oh, he's getting old, huh? I think Sutton, the job that Sutton did at Kentucky, nobody picked them to finish higher than third in the SEC, and they ended up finishing the end of the season ranked third in the country. So I think that's fairly impressive. Ramsey gets 17. One more try coming for this young man out of Toledo, Ohio. It is up. It is there. 
18 points for Clinton Ramsey. 66-59. There's a timeout on the floor as the teams gather around the respective coaches. With the score, Cleveland State 66, Indiana 55. Kevin Mackey said that he felt they could play with Indiana as long as they could force turnovers and control tempo. They've done that so far. You get a look at the foul trouble situation. Clinton Smith with four, Mudd with three. I think Indiana's foul problems are more serious because they're not as deep as Cleveland State. A few seconds ago, Indiana had hit four out of five. They're now five out of 11 for this half. Cleveland is nine out of 14. Indiana scrambling against the press. They were able to avoid the turnover that time, although it looked like a close thing. Callaway. And here Cleveland State asking for a three-second call. It is on the way. The rebound by Mudd. He has 12 rebounds for the game. Good block out by Mudd. McFadden. That's his kind of game. He just couldn't get it to fall. And Andre Harris showing you how valuable he is to the Hoosiers on the rebounding end. Let's see how the experience of Indiana holds up. Just like that. Steve Alford coming through with 18. Alford in the last couple of trips down the court has shown the desire to penetrate inside. And when he has done, done that, the Hoosiers have been successful. Ramsey draws the foul. It's going to be on Meyer, his second. Well, Ramsey is a tough, tough individual. 205, six foot five. Ramsey is a tough guy inside. Now, here's another tough guy, Steve Alford. You can see he just beats Eddie Bryant to the baseline. Good screen inside by Andre Harris to keep the help away. Now, watch the foul here. As Ramsey turns to the basket, Meyer reaches in and hits him, and then Meyer, to add insult to injury, looked like he got a shoulder and arm in the face and went down. Clinton Ramsey. You'll get the second try. Both teams are in the bonus situation. It is 67-61, Cleveland State. The two coaches, Mackey and Knight. Get up, get up. The rebound comes off to Indiana as Rick Calloway has it. Indiana has battled very hard in the game. They have a chance now to cut it to four, and that's as close as they would, would have been in a long time. Stu Robinson. We said before they'd like to get the ball into Alford's hands. Oh, what a move by Alford. And he draws the foul. Alford couldn't get it to fall, but he made a great move. And it was a pretty good shot from that point as we'll look at it again. Alford does a real nice job with the pump fake. As you can see right there, you got to respect that pump fake with Alford simply because he's such a great shooter and then he maintains his pivot foot very well to draw the foul against Paul Stewart. That is the third foul against Stewart. There will be two tries coming to Steve Alford. This next one, if he makes it, will give him 20 for the game. Alford may not be as quick as the Cleveland State guards matching up against him, but Cleveland State, as we said, has to respect that pump fake, and he has used the pump fake to beat them all day long. And he got this one for 20 points. Alford averages 22.4. It's back to a four-point game. And it's defensively, more than anything else, that's gotten Indiana back in the basketball game. They've made Cleveland State play a half-court game. Mud. Oh, great move by Mudd. It was good defense by Indiana. I don't know how you can play the inside defense much better. Everybody's back and set up now. Tripping foul on Bryant as he trips Stu Robinson. You might say in a normal situation, Ralph, that that was a bad foul, but that's the kind of game that Cleveland State plays. They do some gambling, and every once in a while it pays off. Sometime it doesn't. Good no call right there. Ramsey went down, but I don't think there was enough contact. Now, Bryant's going to go after the ball, and as I say, with a lot of teams, you'd say, well, that's a very bad foul, but with Cleveland State, Sort of in for a dime, in for a dollar. They're going to gamble, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Stu Robinson steps up. He has eight points. Two of two from the line today. <laughs> McFadden sneaking in the back door for the rebound. Indiana down by six points. 7.42 to go. He stepped on the baseline. Good defense by Stu Robinson. 
The key down there is not to give up the baseline, and even though McFadden went around him, he went off the court. I've been impressed by the, by the defense that Indiana's done the entire ball game on Ken McFadden. They kept the ball out of his hands as Indiana gets a timeout. They got a timeout. five count got to them. That's right. 7.35 to go. There's timeout on the court with a score. Cleveland State 69, Indiana 63. Don't. Hey, Dad, what's Mom doing in the bathroom so long? Get her ready to go. 7.35 to go, and the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, where over 17,500 seats have been sold for this NCAA first round. You see Cleveland State leading 69-63, and they have led for most of the ball game. Timeouts becoming a factor for, for Indiana now. They only have two left. Cleveland has their full complement of four. Indiana's had to use those timeouts to avoid five-second counts against the press. That's Steve Isle in the game for the first time. Stu Robinson, he's played an awful lot of basketball today. This is offered. Cleveland State continues to lead from here in Syracuse, 69-63. This is Ralph Packer along with Dan Bonner. It's been an exciting game for Cleveland State fans as we've just got the second goal tinting call of the day on Indiana. And it makes it 71-63, Cleveland State. Andre Harris giving you a sample of his great jumping ability, but now watch the Indiana defense. There's three guys right around Eric Mudd. He did well to get the ball up on the board, and then Harris goaltended it. Indiana starts a run, and Cleveland State answers back, as you just see. Andre Harris get his 12th point. 6.44 to go, 71-65. Indiana's leads have been at two and at four. They've only had for short times today in the first half. They trailed by four at the intermission. The last time the game was tied was a 22-all. The impressive thing about Cleveland State the last few minutes is that it's been a half-court game and they've been successful against Indiana. It hasn't been the pressing run-up-and-down game it was in the first half, and yet Cleveland State continues to, to lead. Cleveland State showing us in this half they can be patient if it's called for as Ramsey hits it. On the move, gets it 21 points and puts it back to a 73-65 game, Cleveland State. These guys can, from Cleveland State learn to trade on the playground, and that's the kind of a shot you see on the playground all the time. Galloway. Indiana scrapper. Galloway finally coming back. Big break for Indiana. Steve Alford with the ball. Alford has picked up 20 points. Andre Harris, who is six out of seven for the half. This is it. Missed only his second shot. And the crowd here, Ralph, is starting to believe in the Cleveland State Vikings. There's five and a half minutes left. Cleveland State is up by eight. Cleveland State to Ramsey. We expected a big game out of him, and he's delivered it. This is Stewart. Now on to Bryant. And Cleveland State wants to use one of their timeouts. They have three timeouts left. There is time out of the floor here at Syracuse at the Carrier Dome with the score, Cleveland State 73, Indiana 65. 65, 5, 10 left in the ball game. Cleveland State leading most of the way. Cleveland State has done a nice job in the second half forcing some tough shots on the part of Indiana. Get a chance to see Andre Harris here penetrating to the basket. Now that's an open jumper. That's something Indiana hasn't had too many of. But Eric Mudd comes down with the rebound. Bob Knight has seen his club shoot 44% of this half. Cleveland State is at 57% of the half. And again, the surprising thing about this is that the game in the second half has been played much more at Indiana's pace than at Cleveland State's. It's been basically a half-court game, but Cleveland State has punched the ball inside very effectively. Let's correct the stat we gave you. It's 67% Cleveland State is shooting. Red hot. Ramsey. Ramsey with 23 big ones. There's a foul on McFadden going for the steal. As we said, the gambling defense once in a while gets you in trouble. But Clinton Ramsey has just had a great game, and you 
you take players with backgrounds like the players of the Cleveland State. They play a loose game. They play a playground type of game. And if you make them feel that they're going to beat you, then they're just going to get right on top of you, and they're going to keep punching until you go down. The bio of Clinton Ramsey is super. Three-year starter. He started 88 of 90 ball games since he has been at Cleveland State. He led the conference in steals this year. This game makes 27 double-figure games for him. It is. It's interesting that the neutral, supposedly neutral crowd here in the Carrier Dome is behind the underdog. That is nine points for Stu Robinson. Of course, maybe Syracuse would rather play Cleveland State. Probably looking ahead a little bit and hoping the winner of this game will play St. Joseph's. 4.52 left. You saw the score. Alford walking away at Ed Bryant. Now this is interesting. It looks like Cleveland State is going to try to spread the court a little. I don't know about slowing them down. They've been playing very well at a quick pace, but the one thing this does is it may give their penetrating ability a chance to shine a, a slightly more than it has already. 14 seconds on the shot clock. 425 left on the game clock. Ramsey. You're right. He comes up with 25 as they penetrate it beautifully. They're playing, they're playing slower, but with the court spread, there's more lanes to the basket. Indiana 10 down and in trouble with a little over four minutes to go. Alford. Great Callaway. rebound by Callaway. Indeed it was for number 10. Under four minutes to go, 77-69. Indiana hanging tough, but it's getting critical now. Almost going it over, but the mouse reached out. Good hands by McFadden. Now the dangerous guy in this is the guy with the ball right now, Clinton Ramsey. He's shown the ability to put it on the deck and go by anybody who Indiana has tried to match up against him. He's 9 out of 14 for the ball game from the outside. Three and a half left. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Bryant, Mudd. No! Eric Mudd, unexpected help coming in. But they have called him. Coach Mackey has called him his best ball player. McFadden almost with a steal. Good control by Alford. Alford. Get up! Rebound comes Get to Mudd. Indiana in trouble with three minutes to go. They're down by 10. The crowd is behind Cleveland State. Everybody in here thinks it's actually going to happen, Ralph. This spread offense has worked to perfection. The floor is spread. There's not very much defensive help. There's plenty of gaps in the defense, and Cleveland State's been finding it. When it comes to rebounds, don't count out Eric Mupp, 33 of Cleveland State. He's pulled out 10 today. 2.35 to go on the game clock. 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Bryant. Started up, knocked away. That was a pretty good move as Alford knocked it away. Only five seconds of the shot clock as he'll get it back in. It won't reset with the ball being knocked away as Winston Morgan comes in, replacing Callaway. Winston Morgan a bit quicker than Callaway is in to try to help against the spread offense, and Kevin Mackey's reminding his troops that they got to get it up quickly. Ramsey, he's not going to make it. They don't make it. The ball will be turned. The shot clock should have should have sounded. Well, it's very difficult to hear in here when the crowd gets involved in the game. And I think official Blaine Sylvester blew his whistle and ruled that it was a shot clock violation, but nobody could hear, and that's what that's what the officials are discussing now, and that's the call. Herb Shapiro went over, talked to the official score after he had talked to Blaine Sylvester, and it is indeed the call. It's a perfect example. The Indiana players stopped playing because they thought it was a shot clock violation, but you got to play to hear that whistle. They almost lost it on the inbounds play. Andre Harris out of offer. 2 10 left. It is tapped in by Andre Harris and a foul on Ramsey. Boy, that is a big break for Indiana. Harris rising up above everybody else to tip it in. Stu Robinson with the drive to the basket. I think Mudd actually got a piece of the ball. Look at Harris get up there. Nobody blocks him out. A bit of a touch foul called on Ramsey. But Indiana now has a chance for a four-point play to cut it to six. 
and we've still got two minutes and five seconds left. He'll be trying to convert at this particular point, though, a three-point conversion. He got the bucket. He does. That'll cut it down to seven. Okay, it's just one free throw. They got the bucket. All right, good. Get carried away here. You don't know what you're doing. Andre Harris. Well, that's a violation. If he misses, they'll get another one. You called it, Coach. Now the mouse stepped in. That's the second time today that has occurred against Cleveland State. And Indiana has to take a chance to redeem themselves. Well, we'll see what kind of poise Cleveland State has now. They've been running the whole game ahead of Indiana. We're getting down to crunch time now. That's a charge. The foul is going to be on Winston Morgan, his second. We've talked a lot about Cleveland State. They've got a good team. They're a scrappy team. But I also think it's interesting to note that they have four players who originally signed and went to school there who transferred to other schools who are still playing or were playing in postseason tournament ball games like Doug Schultz of Akron, Jim Less of Bradley, Tim Lamp of Miami of Ohio, and Dave Colbert who played for Dayton in the NIT. The others, of course, are in the NCAA tournament. A minute, 49 seconds. The clock will stay in the corner. Now, Indiana really does not have the, cannot afford the luxury of letting Cleveland State run the clock down and then giving up a good shot. They got to go get the ball. 20 seconds on the shot clock. A minute, 35. Bryant in the lane. Rebound. Bryant got it. That saved him another 45 seconds. Clinton Smith got his hand on the basketball. Tipped it back to Bryant. The foul is going to be on Indiana. Andre Harris draws his third. The people in Hoosier land have got to be surprised at the outcome of this one. Cleveland State's second effort has been just great. Only great stop by Bryant. Then you see Clinton Smith reaching that big hand out, tipping it to Bryant, who's able to control. What effort all day by Cleveland State. And Clinton Ramsey has led them in scoring. He has 25 points. One and a bonus coming now. Twenty-six points. Ramsey, an AP, honorable mention, All-American in 1985. What a great shot of the bench. Those guys are over there. That's close enough they can feel it, but they're not ready to blow up yet. He got it for 27. 81-71. Indiana down by 10. A minute 15 to go. Andre Harris. He has 16, and now Indiana calls their timeout. They'll have one more timeout left. Indiana has used three. There's timeout of the four with a score. Cleveland State 81, Indiana 73. Let's talk sports. In April, Harding's heroes will compete in the goofy games at Walt Disney World. And Wilma Rudolph and Chris Hinton of the Colts will join me. But I need one more player, and that could be you. If you've got the right stuff and are at least 18 years old, enter the Indiana's own Harding's Heroes contest. In 25 words or less, describe why you think you're a Harding's hero. Then send your postcard to Wish TV. Include your name, age, address, and phone number. For more information, join me weeknights at 6 on News 8 as we go for the gold. You'll see this table chart in many bars and restaurants. It suggests how many drinks a person of your weight can have before alcohol affects your driving ability. But individual limits can vary, depending on what you've eaten, your mood, and your health. So whether you're drinking in a restaurant, at home, or at a friend's house, know your limit. One thing's for certain, behind the wheel is no place to be if you've had one too many. A message from the National Restaurant Association and this station. Cleveland State 81, Indiana 73. Ralph Acker with Dan Bonner and the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Cleveland State has done a nice job of spreading the defense of Indiana. You get a look here, see what kind of a situation the spread creates. Now, when Ramsey catches the ball as he penetrates to the basket, there's a wide oh. crease, nobody there to help out. It's not until Isle comes over when Ramsey's actually shooting the ball, and that's what Cleveland State's trying to create, those creases. Now they face the Indiana all-court press. They got to get it across half-court. We're going to have a 10-second violation. They just made it. 
Bryant. 57 seconds on the game clock. 81-73. The foul. Nope, no foul. On the line, on the sideline by Ramsey. Cleveland State has been dishing it out all day with the pressing defense. Now they're gonna, we're going to have to see if they can take it. Not a very good decision by Bryant to give the ball to Ramsey in that situation. He dribbled the ball out of bounds. To the, team. Ah! To the hoop, Indiana. Steve comes up with his basket. Steve Isle comes Isle. up with his first two. It's a tough situation for Isle. It looked like he was a little hesitant. You could hear his Indiana teammates yelling, come on, Steve. He took it very hard to the basket. That's Indiana's last timeout. Bobby Knight standing there thinking about this one after Alford has just dished off a beautiful pass. Alford has been penetrating and dishing off nicely all day. Now there, Isle, he catches the ball for a moment. He hesitates, but then takes it very strong to the basket. Steve Isle out of Hamilton, Ohio, a 6'6", 205-pound sophomore, averages one and a half points a ball game. We'd like to take this opportunity as we look into the Cleveland State huddle to to thank the people from the NCAA, the tournament representatives, Eugene Corrigan from the University of Notre Dame, Syracuse uh, University, the tournament director, Jake uh, Cornball, the tournament manager, Chet Blanchuk, the tournament media coordinator, Larry Kimball, the tournament uh, facility manager, Tom Benzel, from Cleveland State, the athletic director, Robert Busby, that we talked to at halftime, the head basketball coach, the energetic Kevin Mackey and his staff, the sports information director, Merle Levin. And from Indiana University, of course, Ralph Floyd that you saw at halftime. The head basketball coach, Bob Knight, and his staff. Sports information director, Kit Klingenhofer. Transportation arrangements have been made through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for the NCAA championships. Indiana, 30-56 for the ball game. And the inbound pass with his aisle, drawing the foul. That's what Indiana is left ball with at the moment, Ralph. If the ball does get inbounds, then Indiana has to foul right away. Isle has not played very much. That's his first foul. He's the obvious guy to give the fouls. You get a look at a disappointed Ricky Calloway sitting there on the bench for the Hoosiers. Cleveland State has hit 67.9 for the free throw line this year. At the line is Eric Mudd. He's hit 61.4. So they may have handled and fouled the right man. They did. 37 seconds to go. Off. Closes it by two. Now Indi 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 Indiana does not have any timeouts. Mudd does a nice job getting rid of the ball. Isle draws the foul. That's a good play by Isle. He absolutely, even though that's a two-shot foul, there's no way that you can let that guy go in for the layup or the dunk. Isle did a nice job to have the foul not look like an intentional foul. Smith will get to go to the line for two, but Indiana will get the ball back. Very good pass coming down the court to Clinton Smith, who had gotten away up court. That's all Isle could do. He does a nice job to keep him from getting it in the basket. And Clinton Smith drops this one through, his 13th point. Uh, Kevin Mackey, he's got to be a happy man now with 21 seconds to go. His team leads it, 82-77 over IU. 14 points by Clinton Smith. 20 seconds. Stu Robinson. That's it, Ralph. That's it. Game's over. Alfred's going to commit the foul. 10 seconds left. Ramsey's going to go to the line for two more, and the Cleveland State Vikings are getting a standing ovation from this crowd in the Carrier Dome. When we opened up about an hour and 50 minutes ago, we told you that Cleveland State felt as if they could win this ball game, and they were sincere about their thoughts. All the way, Vikings, it says. We may be watching the Cinderella team of the NCAA 1986. There's a timeout on the court with a score. Cleveland State 83, the IU Hoosiers 77. Car sales are zooming. You've been stalling, looking, waiting, wondering when. Now, get moving with First Bank's 10.5% new car loan rate. 10.5 annual percentage rate loans from First Bank. Buying a new car has never been easier. 
it's the lowest bank rate in Indianapolis, 10.5%. The key is to see First Bank and Trust Company, the auto loan leader. Seventy-seven is our score. Number 44, Clinton Ranzen, who has 27 points, will be stepping up to the free throw line. Dries the socks. His hands off on the socks. We'll have one in a bonus. What a story the nation has seen this afternoon in basketball here. Yeah, listen, let's go. Rebound belongs to Indiana. Indiana doesn't have any timeouts. Cleveland State can just, they don't even have to bring the ball in bounds. Offer just 24. He can just hold it. That's it. The if game's over. If you're riding Cinderella, center mail at 2451 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, because they have just advanced today as Cleveland State. Kevin Mackey rejoices as his team has beaten Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. Cleveland State 83, Indiana 79. This telecast is a production of the NCAA Communications Department. David E. K. Wood, Assistant Executive Director. The executive producer of NCAA Productions is James A. Marcioni. This game was produced by George Smith, directed by Billy McCoy. For Dan Bonner, this is Ralph Acker saying so long from the Carrier Dome. The final score is Cleveland State 83, Indiana 79. This has been an NCAA Productions telecast. Here's an offer from the Contour Chair Company that's better than free. Right now during the special TV offer, we'll mail anyone who calls a check worth $200, good toward the purchase of any contour chair. And there's more for free, including a free phone call for this free catalog to find out all about contour chairs. Contour chairs have the same basic orthopedic design as astronauts' chairs, have optional heat and massage units built right in to help ease away everyday aches and pains. And they're available in a wide selection of furniture styles, sizes, and fabric coverings. So don't wait. Call right now to get your free catalog about the contour chair by mail and this free $200 rebate check. Call now for your free catalog and check. Everything's free by mail, and there's absolutely no obligation. Call toll-free 1-800-228-8300, 1-800-228-8300. Call 1-800-228-8300, toll-free 1-800-228-8300. Life is a puzzle to a young person. There are so many paths to the future. When you were that age, how did you know which path to choose? Rotary clubs help youth find direction through career counseling, scholarships, and leadership training. You know the pattern. You can guide young people. Volunteer in a community youth program. Help youth find the path to the future. A message from Rotary clubs worldwide. Workforce Habits, Monday night at 6 on News 8. Channel 8 now joins this program already in progress. Well, Best is getting your braces well, off, I would yeah, think. Really. Yeah. Uh, I just want to also throw in that one of the best and also the worst would be the school situation. Um, we we started on the show at 9 years old and 13. Uh, and 13, so we were still in school. And the thing is that when you're on a show, you have a tutor. And you go for three hours, and usually it's just you and the tutor or however many people are on the show. And that is good in a sense that you get, you know, um, a lot of people feel a Spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it... Spectrumality. Solid. Spectrumality. Price. Spectrumality. Room. Spectrumality. Technology. Spectrumality. Economy and more, all part of the new Chevy Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality called... Spectrumality! today's Chevy, Chevy! This bug's for all that you do. You keep America going. You keep the juices flowing. You are the muscle, the hope and the hustle. You keep the country growing and new. You Beachwood 
good age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Oh, hi. If I were you, I wouldn't go get a snack right now. Because this demonstration is built into a, a fever pitch. For perfect documents over and over again, call Team Xerox. We are back in Ann Arbor, where the Wolverines have wrapped it up. And I'm with the biggest warrior of them all, Roy Tarkley. Roy, congratulations. Thank you very much. It was a hard buck game, but we won it right from the heart, and we came out and played our hard. Billy, can you get a comment from Coach Green? Hey, hey, Bill, I, I, know you, I know you're getting jostled pretty well here, but congratulations. That was an awesome display. Thank you very much, Billy. Uh, these kids, I'm so proud of them. They hung together, and you know what expectations can be like, but they met them. One of the things that I was so amazed at today was the way your team on every single rebound seemed to just want it so bad. We went out. and get you out of here. We'll be right back in Ann Arbor in a moment. You finally get the answer, and now you can't wait to tell someone. Here at Hewlett Packard, we never stop thinking about how our business computing equipment can be used to solve your company's problems.